Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good morning. My name is Ray Tuchiyama on this show called All About Leadership. And today we have Rafi Gaspar Asaoka, who is based in the Bay Area today, but he's from Hawaii originally. In fact, the pineapple fields of Mililani, or what became Mililani Town. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Bay Area, about the high-tech industry, and the role venture capital and venture capitalists play in the development of that economy, now roaring and, and the center of the world, and envy of the globe in many ways. Welcome to the show. Thanks Rachel. for having me. Well, and, and you're, you're a Honolulu person. Where did you grow up? So, uh, born and raised in Hawaii. I grew up in Mililani, went to elementary middle school in Mililani, and then uh, went to Iolani for, for high school. Okay. But lived in Mililani up until college. Okay, great. And, and w you went to college, and uh, did you kind of uh, envision yourself, had an idea what you wanted to be when you entered college? Absolutely not. Okay, well, what did you study and where did you go? So I, I did my undergrad at USC in LA. Uh, I went into electroengineering for a few reasons. One, um, math and science was sort of my skill, my stronger skill set back in high school, so I geared towards engineering. And when I was choosing electroengineering, it was really, I didn't know too much about the different types of opportunities post-graduation, uh, but I was really interested in solar energy oh. at the time, oh, um, and just given Hawaii's abundance of, uh, of sun and, and solar power. Um, so I went into electri electrical engineering thinking that I would do something in the solar industry. But clearly didn't okay, end up well, there. <laughs> uh, well, life changes. Um, yeah. uh, now, when you're back as a child, um, uh, can you identify a point where you said, wow, math and uh, engineering or science are really fun, and this is what you wanted to do, and really excelled? Or it took time to really get into that? Um, and when was that? So I think when I was younger, I always liked numbers better. I think the, the thing that excited me about math and science in particular is that there was a definite answer. You're either right or you're wrong. Right. Versus some of the other subjects, English and history. I remember there's a little bit more of a gray area where you could debate certain things, and that, that didn't really sit as well with me. Um, so I was always a little better in school at math and science. Um, from an early age, liked numbers a lot. Okay. So just from a very young age, just, just geared towards. So you're, uh, you're ending uh, USC, and yeah. uh, you're majoring in double E, electrical engineering. Yeah. And where did you go from there? Yeah, so when I graduated from USC in electrical engineering, I, I did an internship at Raytheon in LA, um, doing working on signal processing stuff for some of their chips um, that they were building for their radars. For, uh, for F-15 fighter jets. And I remember, really great experience, large engineering company, my first real big stint in doing some engineering work outside of school. Um, but I sort of felt lost. It was a really big company. Um, I was working on a very, very small part, this testing part of, of a much larger project. And I wanted to really get a better understanding of, of what other opportunities you could do with the engineering degree. So I decided to go to grad school. So I went up north a little uh, to Stanford and. Um, did a graduate degree in electrical engineering as well, just to take a little bit more time in school to explore what opportunities there were. So you're, you were uh, studying even more after, <laughs> after your uh, bachelor's. I really like school. So, so <laughs> you, you were in there, and then from Stanford, uh, you found yourself, of course, in the middle of uh, the high-tech universe, uh, actually, right. the, yeah. the Bay Area in yeah. Palo Alto, Mountain View, yeah. Cupertino, and so forth. And so uh, when you got there, was it a change from uh, the L.A. kind of, yeah. you know, uh, as we disc discussed before, uh, Los Angeles and, uh, and Southern California has more disconnects yeah. uh, among the, yeah. you know, economic uh, players. Like yeah. Hollywood is quite different than the uh, defense industry, which okay. is uh, different from uh, other uh, types of uh, retail and mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing. There's a lot of huge uh, uh, economic forces in Southern California, yep. but uh, not as focused and concentrated in the Bay Area. And, and did you find a, a new world when you got up there? Yeah, so two things there. So being an engineer in Silicon Valley or going and studying engineering is like the Wall Street of New York. It's okay. the center and the capital, and you, you as an engineer and, and doing something in tech feel like you're on top of the world right. there just because there are so many companies and opportunities. 
Um, in LA, it was great experience. Like USC was fantastic, but there, you know, there's the media industry, there's the right. entertainment industry. There's so many different things that you could do. Tech was just one small part of it, whereas the Bay Area tech is the majority of right. it, which was a very, very different experience. Um, I distinctly remember a story. I was driving up the 101 from right. LA with all my stuff in the car, couldn't see out the back as I was moving up to Stanford. And I was driving down uh, University Avenue onto Palm Drive, and you see well, yeah, 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 Stanford, very nice you see Palms, yeah, you're on the side, right? And then yeah. you're you're passing by small coffee shops, right, right. and you see these two people sitting on a right. like you and me just right. talking about something, and you're like, wow, this is where Facebook was created. Right, exactly. This is the coffee shop where yeah. Twitter and Instagram and you know Google, right. the, where they talked about their ideas, and that that was just really inspiring. Oh, wow! And so it's a it's a. It was, it was a really good experience. I remember going to a Starbucks, uh, I think, at the Palo Alto Shopping Center. Yeah. I could hear a pitch in yeah. every <laughs> table. Yeah, and, now uh, that's all it is, right? Um, and, and, and one of the most famous uh, venture capital firms uh, started out in that area called Kleiner Perkins. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the granddaddy uh, mm -hmm. of uh, venture capital firms. Your current firm, uh, Kanan, what is that history uh, when you uh, go back in time? Yeah. What was it that really uh, put Kanan into the uh, world and uh, they made a hit. What, what was that? Yeah, sure. So Canyon Partners has been around for 31 years now. It started in 1987. It was actually spun out of GE. It was oh, GE's right, corporate venture right. capital arm a long time ago. The four founders there decided to, to split off and do their own institutional uh, venture capital. Um, had an office out in Connecticut where GE was, and then they moved and create an office on Sand Hill Road where all the VCs stayed. Right, right, right. Um, so this was the late 80s, early 90s. They invested very similar in early stage companies, seed, series A, series B companies, um, over now 11 funds. Uh, companies in the past, Match.com, Success right. Factors, DoubleClick um, were some of the hits. More recently, companies like Instacart, um, Skybox was another one. and and a bunch of others uh, more recently that so it's pretty spread across the board. Um, no, there's, there's uh, a number of people like yourself, yeah. uh, you know, in the group. And of course, uh, some people have uh, backgrounds in, say, healthcare, sure. or another person in software, sure. another person in, uh, in another uh, ASICs or whatever. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, do you have a niche that you look at, or you know, you have a lot of uh, semiconductor chip ASIC uh, experience and coding yeah. experience, uh, very technical. Uh, to yeah. others, maybe really technical. Yeah. Uh, and, and and but you don't have the uh, kind of industry experience. You know, right. you haven't been in yeah. uh, health. Healthcare or uh, you know banking or finance or whatever. Uh, what what uh, what are you looking at? What what is yeah. that category that you're assigned to? Yeah. So so Canaan, we look across the board in both tech and healthcare, which is what explains a little bit of the breadth of of investors and their backgrounds. But also, I think that the thinking is that uh, entrepreneurs they they come from all different backgrounds. Some from industry, some straight out of school, and they've all created a lot of. There's a lot of stories about success companies created with very different backgrounds. So as investors in these entrepreneurs, we like to match, have that same sort of idea where we want our investors to have a breadth of backgrounds as well. Like diverse opinions creates mm. um, diverse ways of looking at opportunities and investments. Um, so yes, my background is a little more on the technical side. Uh, I end up skewing a little more towards technical investments just because it's where my skill set lies. Um, but yeah, we have people that that have very, very different backgrounds and all look at very different things. How, how, uh, how different? I mean, usually yeah. uh, in the VC world, I see somebody from with a double E or computer science sure. degree and, and an MBA yeah. and like five years in, in finance yeah. or you know uh, equity fund or whatever, yeah. and then coming into a VC yeah. uh, fund. Uh, are there other people that you can think uh, uh, that are really uh, from left field? Sure. So. One of my partners, uh, she has a PhD in econ. Oh, um, okay. So that's, that's one of them. Another one, uh, he, he ran a startup. He was the CEO of, right. a, of a company, ran it from very first fundraising all the way to becoming a public company, sold it. So took the entrepreneur route and then went to wow. VC. Um, others have similar backgrounds to me where they did engineering. Mm -hmm. Some of them did an MBA and then came back. And then some of them are MDs and PhDs in, wow. in physics or in biosciences. Right, right, right. So 
very diverse. Now, uh, yourself, you're in the Bay Area, yeah. but you're not from the Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, how about your colleagues? Uh, are there some from the Bay Area, or most of them are from all over the place? I, I can't. I know one, I remember one colleague is from the Bay Area, oh. but none of the other 15 or so investors that we have are from the Bay Area. So the Bay Area attracts yeah. talented people from yeah. all over the world. I yeah. mean, you must have people from Europe and India and, yeah. and, and Asia also. People from India, people from East Coast, West Coast, Hawaii. Now, is there a global focus now? Uh, do you uh, deal in companies solely in North America or in China or yeah. sometimes in Europe? Is there a geographic scope? I don't think there's any hard and fast rules. It's, um, it's a lot more where we think that we can add value and where we have expertise. A lot of that lies in the US today. But we've had investments in Canada, in Europe, and some in India in the past, but, and even Israel. Mm -hmm. um, but because of time differences, because it's right. so far away, our network is largely here in the US. It's a little harder to add a lot of value right. other than just capital. Um, so, we tend to not do as many investments there. We focus on the U.S. Yeah, typically, I've heard, uh, as a rule of thumb, you want to be within an hour's drive <laughs> of your investment. <laughs> and that's a stretch, but, yeah. uh, but, I, but you're correct that you're adding value from your experience and from your network yeah. that you can identify C-level people that you can right. pull in yeah. or some resource or yeah. introduce them to a potential customer. Yeah. Uh, all the things that a VC person uh, ha uh, should do. Yeah, and on top of that, I, I think we spend so much much time looking at investments, looking at where the industries are headed, looking at what uh, where the tailwinds are in a certain market, and that changes from place to place too. So if we have a specific expertise around what's going on on the West Coast or what's going on in the U.S., that doesn't always apply to what, what's happening in China and That's whatnot. Right. So we tend to focus our efforts on where we can add. What is a typical way a person comes to you? Uh, does it come from referrals yeah. uh, from other, um, you know, from other banks, or uh, uh, yeah. you know, a close colleague, or um, a friend of uh, um, the, one of the senior partners? How yeah. does a, uh, a person come to you and says, you know, I want to make a pitch to you? Yeah. Can I have, you know, th uh, thirty minutes of your yeah. time? A lot of it is from referrals. Um, that what I've learned here in the Bay Area, or in the Bay Area at least, is Silicon Valley is actually really small and very, very well connected. Um, once you've been in the Bay Area for a couple of years, your connection, you're one or two nodes away oh, from most people yeah. in tech, which, wow. I, which yeah. I find fascinating <laughs> um, on its own right. But that, being, that leads to you being able to get networks and connections to a lot of people very quickly. Um, so a lot of it is referrals. Some of it is cold or inbound, but um, I think referrals tend to show that they really want to meet, that they, that they have an interest in, in getting to know the ecosystem well and getting to work with right. the network well. So. But they got to a person who knows yeah. you. That, yeah. I think that's the key. And we will take a break and come back about all about Hawaii and tech. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Aloha and Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value the accomplishments and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. We are back with my guest, Rafi Gasper Asalka, on another program all about leadership. And in fact, we, this is turning out to be all about venture capital, <laughs> which he is an expert in. And we're still continuing to explore the daily life of a VC person yeah. and what this person does. And it's kind of a, like a mystery to people in Hawaii because there aren't many VCs that you meet on King yeah. Street or downtown or Moilili and so forth. 
So uh, you, you're a rare breed when you're in Hawaii, but you're not, of course, in Silicon Valley or Bay Area, where you can bump into three venture capitalists yeah. at Starbucks and you know uh, the Stanford um, uh, shopping center or in Mountain View or uh, El Fanayo. <laughs> uh, I hope it's still there. It's the, the restaurant in downtown uh, Palo Alto. And so we're talking about uh, venture capital, and it's 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 part of the ecosystem to create um, uh, new companies and hire people and really foster growth in the mm -hmm. economy. And we've been talking in, uh, about Hawaii, uh, and, and can it yeah. be part of this high tech world? Yeah. And uh, and we discussed that there is an ecosystem yeah. uh, of. Uh, research universities, yeah. uh, disciplines uh, of uh, computer science and engineering, plus business. Yeah. Uh, you have to have people who can pitch, can speak English, can, yeah. are fluent and really uh, are dynamic and, yeah. and, and can travel to India or Japan or Korea or Silicon Valley or, or London. And so, um, and, and we're talking about, you know, I, I do work in Kalihi Palama, I mean, a math club that uh, one of the schools there stays until 5.30 each evening because they don't have a PC or internet at home. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're talking about you know, a, a, a population in the public schools especially that's disconnected uh, mm -hmm. from careers in, in engineering and math. There is no, I'm working with a person at Farrington High School right now to bring AP mm -hmm. computer science mm -hmm. to Farrington High School, but that's like in every school in, in the Bay Area, right. right today, every high school, and there's only 14 high schools that have AP computer science, DOE high schools, out of 45 right. in the whole entire state. So we're, we're catching up, uh, but it's, it's slow, it's, it's difficult, it's a challenge. Uh, and so you've been in the Bay Area, in the trenches, so what advice do you have to get things going for Hawaii? Yeah, I'll tell you an interesting story. So when I was graduating from from Stanford in the Bay Area, and I was trying to figure out what to do, talking to my friends about what jobs they're going to go into. There was a hierarchy or, or a rank of, of how cool a job was. Right. <laughs> um, in most areas, when I was in LA, talked to my other friends in Boston right. and whatnot, the coolest jobs you could get were the big companies, the Facebooks, right. the Googles, oh, yeah. right, the right, ones right. that had Apple, yeah. the ones yeah, that yeah. had a big name to it. Right. In Silicon Valley, it's actually the inverse. Interesting. The smartest people, yeah. the most ambitious, the most driven people go out and do a startup. Well, Either work at a startup okay. or start their own. Yeah, okay. And then the hierarchy of working for Apple or Google is down right. the line. Um, There's a, really a culture of innovation when you yes. think about it. Yeah. And, but, but it's subtle, yeah. uh, but that, that has massive implications hmm. all down the line, of not only from the universities to the startups, but then you think about the large companies, the Facebooks and Googles, they know that the best talent is with these early stage right. startups. So they want to help them, they want to work hmm. with them, they want to eventually buy them. Right, right. And so this flywheel of from, from big company all the way down right. to little one to the universities, is really working, and it all stems from this perception that the best people go out and do startups. Right. Um, and that I think that's a unique culture to Silicon Valley. Not a lot of other places yet have that same mindset in spades that Silicon Valley does, but that really fosters a lot of um, interconnectivity and a lot of uh, connections between all the way down from the stack from big tech companies. As opposed to, to Hawaii right now, one out of three people work for the city, state, or federal government, and yeah. those are great jobs yeah. <laughs> in Hawaii. Yeah. So it's a reverse. I mean, uh, you, uh, you want you know pay and benefits right. and uh, long-term pension, you work for right. the government. Uh, in, in Silicon Valley, it seems you want really to create your own yeah. innovation, your yeah. own product. It's all about taking it. risk and trying to reap the rewards. Um, that entrepreneurial spirit and that culture of innovation really pushes you to try new things, and Silicon Valley rewards that. So I heard what's happening there. Yeah. So what does that story have to do with Hawaii? So I think there are a lot of lessons um, that we can take from Silicon Valley and hopefully apply to Hawaii or any other uh, areas in in places that want to start to foster more innovation as well. You look at places like LA, like we talked about. Right. When I left LA, there wasn't as much going on there in the startup community, but now it's the third biggest, maybe, wow. maybe the third biggest wow. startup ecosystem there. Hmm. Silicon Beach is what they call it. <laughs> um, yeah. But but they've, they've really tried to push and innovate in a lot of right. the ways and help startups in the same way that you see Silicon Valley has done hmm. for decades on decades. Um, and you're starting to see that in other pockets like Chicago, like DC and Denver and whatnot. And I think Hawaii is doing a good job. There's 
whenever I come back home, um, I try to meet some of the people doing entrepreneurial activities here, and it's great. I love seeing it. Um, I just want there to be more. What is, what is, when you see uh, a meet an entrepreneur in Hawaii, is there anything that, oh, if only that person had this, they could be more successful? Being an entrepreneur is hard. Oh, um, yeah, that's right. I think that when, when we meet entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, I spend, I meet maybe four companies, new companies a day. So I'm meeting 15 to 20 new companies wow. a week. Um, that passion and that, right. that drive to risk everything, to max out their credit cards, to right. quit their job that right, has a right. nice pension and go out and do this, yeah. like that's the go big or go home mentality, right. yeah. I think is, I haven't seen the level at which it exists in Silicon Valley and other places. Well, how about yeah. the other thing, uh, technical expertise? I mean, you have people with a great idea. If yeah. only I could find a great coder yeah. <laughs> to do my product, okay? It, it, it's that they don't have that CS or yeah. coding background. Yeah. And so the two things, product and, and, and technical expertise, are not aligned yeah. within that person. Uh, and so there's a lot of angel investors in Hawaii uh, complain about deal flow. There yeah. aren't that many people with ideas coming out, yeah. or their products are not for the global market. It's right. for a tiny niche market in Hawaii, right. won't go anywhere, so right. why, why fund it? Well, I, I think a lot of that, that access to deal flow, the, the ability to create deal flow, comes again from that idea that entrepreneurship should be the thing that you do. Um, it should be the thing that's rewarded, not the all right, I can't find a, a job at a big company, I'll go off and try my startup. Um, the, the startup should be the thing that you do. And if, if we can foster that innovation, that entrepreneurial spirit, I think you'll see a lot more deals and a lot, a lot of deal flow coming. Because I, I mean, I, I know the, at least my classmates that I graduated with, there's a ton of smart people that come out of Hawaii every year. There's a lot of people that I graduated with that went into technical fields. So there's a lot of people that want to come home and that either are home or want to come home. Um, so I, I think that we have the, the right ingredients for it. It's a little bit of a mind, mindset shift that I think yeah. is happening. And you were at uh, USC and Stanford, and Stanford especially is the yeah. mecca of entrepreneurship and innovation. Any lessons from how they foster innovation and, 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 and really drive entrepreneurship within the campus and get startups outside? Sure. So two things there. You have um, people on campus, your students, your classmates, to your teachers and professors that you have an idea with them. They come to their office hours. Let's jam on it. Let's okay. work on it together. Right. And if you find something, like we'll find funding for it. Wow. Like there's always, right. there's no barrier yeah. to making innovation happen. And that mindset is pervasive throughout Stanford. Anyone can start anything right. and you just find some friends and you have a good idea and you want to work hard, like let's make it happen. Um, so that's one. And then secondly, you have support from larger companies. You have support from the university. Uh, Stanford, a lot of patents and a lot of innovation comes out of Stanford. The, the Stanford Patent Office, I right. know, is, is really helpful with right. um, helping students take that idea from research or whatnot and commercialize it. So there's a lot of things working in their favor. And there's also been a huge investment from alumni. You know, I yeah. went to the, uh, and, and uh, like companies that you said, I've, I've spoken at the Bill Gates uh, yeah. Computer Science yeah. meeting. It's unbelievable. That's and true. there's been buildings all over the place uh, built uh, for new labs, facilities yeah. in the last barely 10 years yeah. uh, while I've been visiting and giving lectures there. So that's been a tremendous boost. Uh, the right. connections to alumni, to uh, capital, venture capital, and also the companies. And like you say, the faculty, and the collegial atmosphere yeah. really uh, are inclusive and, and it's not siloed. Yeah. I think that's something that uh, universities could take heart in to uh, have interdisciplinary, you know, product oriented, really uh, integrate a lot of ideas and expertise together. Absolutely. I mean, I think Stanford's a good example about you being able to create your own major. Oh, like a, right. There's a lot of people out there that end up putting together a bunch of classes that they think will help them in their career further on, and then they just package it together and create a major. It's super interdisciplinary, encompasses a bunch of different degrees together. Um, and like Stanford's really good about, about letting people do that. So. Now, you go back to passion, I guess, uh, and risk taking. Mm -hmm. I think that that's what I'm hearing from mm -hmm. you. That's, that's a, uh, endemic in the yeah. uh, barrier um, environment and society. Uh, how would you foster that? How would you grow that? How would you trigger that in Hawaii? 
So I think it, I'll go back to, to what I was saying about Silicon Valley. What makes it work so well is that every piece of the stack, there's a commitment towards entrepreneurs and a commitment towards helping entrepreneurs get better and fostering that innovation of new ideas and new companies from universities and even big companies. If you look at when, we, when I meet a bunch of startups and they're pitching me their ideas right. and we get to a customer slide, right. the customers on that slide right. are often really big tech companies, right. the Salesforce, the right. Facebooks, right. the right. Googles, they're and they're buying. the ones yeah. buying, right. being the early adopters right. of new technology right. and the ones trying and buying new things. Um, and that, that has two benefits. One, they get to be on the cutting edge right. of where technology is headed and they get that first early look. But two, I mean, they're helping entrepreneurs get into that mindset of we can build this stuff and these big companies are going to help us grow. Right. Like we're all working together right. to push innovation forward. Well, I think you have, uh, if I can infer from what you're saying, <laughs> a, 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 the disconnected pieces in Hawaii, Bishop Street, mm. Waikiki, UH, and uh, there's a lot of people uh, from, the, uh, from Japan, from Asia, yeah. and, and, and mainland and uh, elsewhere. Uh, and of course, uh, the, it has to be connected back on the back end with uh, the public school system, you yeah. know, uh, K-12. Yeah. And um, I, when I was with MIT, uh, I was at a meeting where Paul Gray, the former late uh, president, was asked, how do you teach creativity at mm -hmm. MIT? And he thought about it, he says, well, if the student Freshman does not have creativity, but the time he or she enters MIT, MIT won't yeah. teach him. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very interesting uh, concept. The K-12 is very, very significant. Yeah. And by the time uh, it hits a, a, a major university, that person has the skill set really to absorb more technical skills and you know mm -hmm. uh, programs and so forth. And then afterwards can create a new product yeah. you know, after graduating yeah. and, and just go forward in that. And so K-12 for me is very, very important. And that I think yeah. is the number one priority in the state uh, going forward. Um, and so uh, Rafi, for the future, where do you uh, see yourself in five to 10 years? I, so my, my goal um, with being in the Bay Area, being involved in tech from the VC angle is to take, try and take all these learnings and lessons of what makes Silicon right. Valley so, so successful and try to come back home and, oh. <laughs> and take some of those learnings and see if we can help the ecosystem there. Because I, someone told me something really interesting. There's no other place other than Hawaii where there are so many people that are really smart, really passionate from Hawaii that want to come home, right. but that, that the excuse is we're all like, what are we going to do? We're right. looking for a job, um, looking for a way to come back home. So I think if we can catalyze something here in Hawaii, if we can take some of those lessons of what makes other ecosystems successful, bring them home to Hawaii, I think you'll open the floodgates for a bunch of talent and a bunch of people that want to come home and will help build this ecosystem. Oh, I think that sounds tremendous. Uh, you know, Vegas has attracted Unfortunately, or fortunately, 60 to 70,000 former Hawaii residents yeah. are living there for economic reasons. Yeah. And there are also thousands of people, uh, like you said, in the Bay Area. I yeah. mean, we know of people who have startups employing UH graduates yeah. in San Francisco and other parts of Silicon Valley. So there is talent out there, yeah. and they just uh, fit in better today uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, but wish to really return and, and um, uh, be part of the new economy of Hawaii. And that will drive more investment in to 12 will yeah. drive more investment in infrastructure here, and um, Hawaii will be truly a, a innovative uh, place. Yeah, like you said, I think it takes everybody working together, though, yeah. right? It takes the regulators, the government working with the stars, working with the the economy that that drives Hawaii today, tourism, and everybody working together to, to really foster innovation and push it forward. Well, I hope that will happen. It has to happen. Uh, I hope so too. Because, you know, I always believe that uh, we are innovators even from the kingdom. King yeah. Kalakaua put in electric lights in Iolani Palace yeah. before the White House. Yeah. He was an early technology adopter. And I think we've forgotten that, that people in the kingdom in the past were really trying to propel uh, Hawaii, like Governor Burns said, he wanted to see a Hawaii economy based on research. Yeah. He really did, and you're gonna be part of that, I hope, in the future. I hope so. Thank too. you very much, Rafi, for your time. And this is all about leadership. My name is Rachel Chiyama.